Here we're going to be looking at recording notes receivable. Now a note receivable is a written promise to pay a certain sum of money at a specific future date here. Note, notes receivable. All notes have an interest element due to the time value of money. They either can be an interest bearing note which have a stated rate of interest or two a non-interest bearing note which includes interest as part of their face value here. So let's look at this case here where you have a note issued at its face value and where it would be an interest bearing note. There's interest included on the face of this note here. So when the interest stated on the note equals the effective market rate of interest, then the note sells at its face value. So let's look at our example here. Corporation E lends Corporation B 10000 in cash in exchange for a $10,000 three-year note bearing interest at 10% per year, which equals the market rate of interest in this case also at 10% a year. So uh, the note uh, sells at its face value in this case since the interest on the note here for 10% equals the market rate of interest here for 10%. So the note is issued at its face value the stated rate of interest here at 10%. So the note here is comprised of the present value of its principal amount here of $10,000 discounted back here uh, at three years and at the beginning of the year here at 10% interest and you get $7,513 the present value here the principal. Now you take the present value of the interest element here. Now remember there was a $10,000 note with a 10% interest here per year so it would be a thousand dollar payment on this note each year either received or paid here. So let's look at the case here discounting the thousand dollar payment back here at the end of the period here for three years at a 10% interest rate. Those payments here the present value is worth $2,486. So adding the present value of the principal of $7,513 plus the present value of the interest interest elements of payments here of 2486 gives us a $10,000 amount which equals the face value of the note. Now to record this here. Uh, first off, uh, in this case from the Corporation A, the lender, they would have paid out $10,000 here for this note and they would have received here a notes receivable. It would have debited that for $10,000. And then each year here, uh, the Corp A, the lender, would receive those interest payments here on that note of $1,000 each. So they would debit their cash here for $1,000 each year for each of those payments and then they'd go and credit the interest revenue on the income statement for those $1,000 payments that it received this interest on this note. And then at the end of the note they would have received the $10,000 cash uh, for this notes receivable from Corporation B here and then they would have removed the notes receivable off their balance sheet here for $10,000. Okay, now let's look at a zero interest bearing note here. That's a note with a zero interest on it. It doesn't require any interest payments. So both its present value, that's the cash paid to the issuer, and its future amount are known. And therefore the interest rate or the implicit interest rate can be calculated here. So again, for example here, Corporation A lends Corporation B $10,000 in cash in exchange for a $10,000 three-year zero interest bearing note. Zero interest on this note here. With its present value, here being equal to $7,721 based on the implicit or the implied interest rate. And let's go look and see how we calculate that here. So uh, plugging this into your calculator here, we have the $7,721. That's its present value of the uh, note here. And then at its maturity, we know it's worth $10,000. So plugging those two numbers into your calculator, we're going to come up with an internal rate of return of 9% on this note here. And then to double check that, just take the present value in your calculator later put in the $10,000 amount discounted back here at three years at 9% at the beginning of the period here and you're going to get $7,721 which equates to its present value. Now what we have to do since this note was sold uh, below its face value here we have to set up a discount amortization schedule and we're going to use the effective interest method here and we'll be using the 9% that we calculated here. So for our amortization schedule just to, since it's an interest uh, an, a zero interest bearing note here the cash payments would be zero for each year so years one through three here there'd be cash payments would be zero but we're going to have some interest revenue and we're going to have the amortization here and that's all based off this carrying amount here that we have 
board at present value of $7,721 and we have to amortize it up here to $10,000. So to determine our interest revenue or an amortization here all we take is the $7,721 times 9% interest and we're going to get $695 interest here for year one. And that also equals our amortization amount since we don't have any uh, interest payments here. So the amortization equals the interest revenue. Subtract our am or add our amortization amount here to the carrying value here of $7,721. Uh, we're going to get $8,417. Now just continue on in the same fashion. Or $8,417 times a 9% is going to give us $757. That's our amortized, disc uh, amortized discount amount here. Just keep on adding it, add that here to the big, big beginning of the period and you're going to get your new carrying value here. Now what we have to do is the amortize this discount and recognize we have to amortize the discount which we do and, and recognize the interest revenue each year using again this effective interest method. So let's go look at how we'd record this. Again for our cash we would have paid out here the present value of that note here at $7,721. Now that's looking at from the corporation the lender's perspective here. And we would have recorded a notes receivable here of $10,000 or debited our notes receivable here for $10,000. But since the notes sold at a discount or below its face value, we have this discount of the notes receivable, which is a contra account here to our notes receivable. So we would have credited that here for that full discount amount here of $2,278 off our amortization schedule. And then we would amortize the amount here of that discount each year that we have off our amortization schedule till we come up with our full amortized amount here and then uh, we would also recognize the interest revenue here for each uh, for e each of those years here that we calculated off our amortization schedule so just going back to our amortization schedule here you can see we recognize our interest revenue each year on our income statement and then our amortize of the discount on our note receivable we amortize that down each year and that would take care of our zero interest bearing note Okay, now let's look at an interesting note here where the stated rate on the note differs from the effective or the market rate of interest for that note here. So for our example here, Corporation A again lends Corporation B 10000 in cash in exchange for a $10,000 three-year note which is bearing interest of 10% here on this note. While a note of similar risk here has a market interest rate of 12% here. So for our notes receivable, we have a stated rate of interest here of 10% while the effective interest rate or the market rate here is 12 percent here. So let's go up and make our calculations here. So based on the effective interest rate here of 12 percent, well, the present value of the principal here, we discount uh, that $10,000 back here at three years at 12 percent at the beginning of the year here. That gives us a present value here of $7,117. Now the present value of the interest payments here. Now remember this note had uh, 10 percent interest for the uh, $10,000 note, so we'd get a thousand dollar payment here and interest each year. So discounting that $1,000 payment back here for three years at 12% of interest, that's the effective interest rate, uh, it would get a present value here of $2,401. So adding that to the present value of the principal of $7,117, we get a total of present value for that note here at $9,520. Now the face value of the note here is for $10,000. So the note here was sold for less than the face value, so it was sold at a discount here. So the difference between a $10,000 here less $9,520 gives us $480 of discount here in the note. So now let's go look at our amortization schedule here. Again using this effective interest method here and we're going to use the 12% uh, in effective interest rate here on this note. And uh, first for our cash payments that we receive at the end of each year. Again, those are those uh, that 10% interest uh, payment that we receive of $1,000 each for each year for a total amount here of $3,000. Now the next thing is we have to calculate our interest revenue and our discount that we amortize on this note. So we start with our carrying value here of $9,520. Take that times the 12% effective interest for this note here times uh, well, that 12 
12% here times the $9,520 gives us interest revenue here of $1,142 at the end of year one. Now that includes this cash received that 10% interest payment here of $1,000. So you have to subtract $1,000 from the $1,142 here to get the discount that has to be amortized. The difference here would be $142. Now taking the $142, adding that to the beginning balance here of $9,520, so you get a new carrying amount here of $9,662. Taking that times the 12% uh, interest rate gives us our a new interest, our interest revenue for the end of year two here at $1,159. And just continue on here. Subtract out the cash payment received gives us the amortized amount of $1,159 for the next year. Add that to our uh, carrying um, a previous carrying amount here, and we get our new carrying value. And just amortize that down here until you get to $10,000. So we have a total cash received of $3,000 for those interest payments here, plus the interest revenue, which includes those interest payments of $3,480, plus the discount amount here of $480. So let's go look at how we'd record that on our record that here. So uh, for our cash account here, we have we'd reduce it here, credit it here for $9,520. Now that was the present value of that note that we calculated here, based on the 12% market rate or effective rate of interest, and then we would have uh, credited or debited our notes receivable or recognized the notes receivable here for $10,000. And uh, one other thing here with our cash account, we would have debited that here for $3,000. Those were for those three payments of $1,000 each. Now with our notes receivable, since it was sold here at a discount, we have a contra account that we sent up here, a discount to a notes receivable, or contra account here to notes receivable, where it reduces our notes receivable. So we'd start out with that discount amount here that we offer our amortization schedule of $480 here, or that was the difference between the face value and the uh, present value of that note here and off our amortization schedule then we would debit our uh, reduce our discount to our notes receivable off our amortization schedule till we get to the uh, total amount here of four hundred eighty dollars now our interest revenue, we would have recognized and accredited our interest revenue here for uh, off our amortization schedule too uh, for each of those periods, which includes that $1,000 payment until we get a total amount here of $3,480. And that interest revenue would have been on our income statement. So going back up to our amortization schedule, we recognize this $3,000 cash payment here for the uh, for the cash payments of 10% each year in a note, plus the interest revenue, which includes those cash payments here of $3,480 plus the we amortize that note here the $480 that was the discount here on that note and one last thing here we better remember this for our cash account when this note matures here we would credit our cash account here debit or debited excuse me increase it here for $10,000 and then we would credit our notes receivable or reduce that off our take that off our books here. So that's how we would handle an interest bearing note here where the stated rate of interest of the note differs from the effective market rate. And in this case, we had a discount here on this notes receivable.